Today, testing confirmed that a patient here in New York City had tested positive for Ebola. The patient is now here in Bellevue Hospital. We want to state at the outset there is no reason for New Yorkers to be alarmed. Ebola is an extremely hard disease to contract. It is transmitted only through contact with an infected person's blood or other bodily fluids, not through casual contact. New Yorkers who have not been exposed to an infected person's bodily fluids are not at all at risk. And we want to emphasize that New York City has the world's strongest public health system, the world's leading medical experts, and the world's most advanced medical equipment. Oh, in that case, I'm not concerned. Uh, joining us now is Brian Hook, former U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for International Organization Affairs and founding partner of Latitude Telecom Consultants. I wrote a great piece in the Wall Street Journal, the U.N. agency that bungled Ebola. Welcome, Brian. Thanks very much. Uh, before we get to your piece, uh, what do you make of uh, the way uh, uh, the mayor described, uh, notwithstanding the fact that this doctor who contracted Ebola overseas in Africa uh, went jogging, went to restaurants, went on the subway, took a cab, went bowling, uh, you would think he would know better. Yes, yeah, certainly you would think he would know better. Um, this is somebody who already would have been aware of how it had spread in, uh, in Dallas. So this is... Um, distressing that he would um, you know, uh, be in public like this. He did obviously take the precautions when he was overseas, but um, probably going around town on the subway is not the smartest thing. Yeah, especially since he said he was feeling fatigued the last few days. All right, um, the WHO, the World Health Organization, uh, under the, um, the uh, auspices of the United Nations, uh, you wrote a great piece, as I mentioned, the Wall Street Journal, talking about how they bungled Ebola. How'd they do it? The... It, it's, it's sometimes good to start at the beginning. Here we are, you know, in late October. You actually have to go back to March. March is when this Ebola virus first emerged, and it was in the southeastern forest region of Guinea. And there were about 50 people in that region who were complaining of hemorrhagic fever. On March 22nd, uh, the government confirmed that these are Ebola cases. The first responder was not the World Health Organization, it was a volunteer organization, Doctors Without Borders. That is your opportunity to contain an epidemic. And the WHO, since its founding in 1948, is the directing authority for international health. And even though you had knowledge of Ebola in Guinea on March 22nd, the World Health Organization did not declare an international health emergency until August. And this is the kind of um, sort of bungled response that we can't possibly allow. And so you're calling for a, uh, the formation of a new organization, which would also be under the UN, but totally independent of the WHO. How would it differ? Well, I think there are different ways to do it. In, in, the, in the piece I wrote for the Wall Street Journal, I suggested that we remove the detection capability uh, outside of the, the UN entirely. Uh, what, what sometimes happens is um, the World Health Organization will be aware of a virus, whether it's in China with SARS or whether it's in Guinea. The World Health Organization is largely a union of health ministers. And governments sometimes, either through incompetence or just trying to hide the evidence, um, can be one of the kind of big obstacles you have to deal with. If you were to house the detection capability outside of the UN, you wouldn't experience that conflict of interest that WHO sometimes feels when they need to expose or embarrass a government for its slow response. So I think you could maybe put the detection outside the UN. I suggest in the op-ed that you could create a new entity within the UN system, but you could also, uh, an option to consider is having it outside the UN like uh, Interpol which is um, you know, a good, uh, effective organization uh, you know, working on criminal matters. You could have a similar one when it comes to epidemics and pandemics. And, and we get about 30 seconds. What's the likelihood of this uh, actually coming to fruition? It would really require President Obama to lead on this. Well, that's the end of that. <laughs> so, By the way, Brian, uh, not to be flippant about it, but uh, a great story. Nina Pham, the nurse who contracted uh, uh, in Dallas, one of the two nurses got uh, Ebola. She's now Ebola-free, and she was at the White House 
um, and, and, you know, and, and hugging Obama to make a point, I would presume. But that, that is good news. Anyway, great piece, and I hope it does come to fruition. And I look forward to speaking to you again, sir. Great. Thank you, Steve. Take care. Brian Hook, ladies and gentlemen. Next, Newsmax Deputy Health Editor Nick Tate.